Hey, what's going on everybody? VHS Tacos is back. It's Thursday night. I can't stop grinning. We just got out of Ghostbusters Afterlife. The best movie of the year. Sorry, not sorry, Spider-Man. You should be sorry. Never. Plot breakdown. So here we are. It takes place in real time yes. after the second one. Ghostbusters 2016 doesn't count. We can talk about that later. Don't. And so it actually Don't. kicks off with a little bit of a flashback-ish to yes. present day. Not too, too much, though. And we have someone, and then they're, you know, sprinting away from... From this 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 mountain, this this quarry of sorts, and they're they're getting back home, and then they get to this dilapidated farmhouse, and they run in, and they're trying to activate uh, what looks to be some form of trap or something like that, but it doesn't work. There's something out in the out in the the fields that's coming for him, and so he gets in the house, and then it comes out of the chair, and then kills him. We flash forward to modern day, and we know we have Carrie Coon as the mom, and we, you know, we've got Mike from Stranger Things, and we have oh, little Mike. flashback Captain Marvel playing his sister. You know, they're down on their luck, she can't afford to pay rent, but hey, they inherited this farmhouse from Carrie Coon's father, you know, the kid's grandfather. So, you know, they go out there to see if there's anything that they can do to scrounge around to get a rent check. They, they gotta pay rent. They, they have to survive. One thing leads to another, and come to find out that dilapidated farmhouse belongs to her father, Egon Spangler. Ooh, yeah. Ghostbuster Egon Shock. Spangler. You know, I mean, th this is the kids really discovering what their grandfather was all about, who these Ghostbusters are really all about. But this movie also is about the Ghostbusters reconciling their differences, which, based on things that we've heard about the actual off-screen relationship towards the end between Harold Ramis and Bill Murray, it's actually really touching that they have this come together moment at the end of the movie. For starters, I mean, this movie's fantastic, you know? I mean, compared to 2016, the humor here feels like <laughs> Ghostbusters. Like, it's actual humor. It's not, you know, someone bangs a gong and Chris Hemsworth rubs his eyes and says, ah, too loud. You don't get stupid humor like that. This is like actual genuine humor that comes from That's situations. The movie was embarrassing. It, it comes from genuine situations. It comes from natural, you know, human reactions to different things. The, the kids, they feel real when, you know, they have a crush on somebody. The, the parents and the, the kids feel real when they're having arguments about, you know, what they should and shouldn't do and who's right and who's wrong. Or they feel like an outsider in their own family. Exactly. I mean, this movie, it understands people. People, and that's what made the first couple Ghostbusters movies tick. What also made them tick was the practical effects, which still hold up. And I can't believe how much here was done practically. The terror dogs, well, you know, oh, while the thing. terror dogs are, are stationary, <laughs> they're, they're so practical. Awesome. You know, of course, you know, now we've upgraded the CGI when they're in motion and like running and sprinting and stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, we, we've replaced, well, we've swapped out. Slimer from Muncher, voiced by Josh Gad. Yeah, it's essentially the same thing, you know? He eats, although this time he eats metal. Everything. And he's oh, he's everything. adorably disgusting, and he can shoot out metal parts in like a Gatlin gun fashion. It's really weird. It's really weird, but it's really cool, you know? It, it's weird enough to be different, but it's also familiar enough to be like, oh, this is Ghostbusters. Cast-wise, we have a beautiful cast. You know, McKenna Grace and Finn Wolfhard played the, the, the primary kids, you know? Yeah. I mean, these are the grandkids of Spangler, and they're great. I mean, Mike has been great in Stranger Things, you know, for the last however many years. So and many it, years. just as he's getting older, he, he gets so old. He's so old. <laughs> he just continues awesome. to be good. But the standout, McKenna Grace is the granddaughter. Uh, let's this... be honest, her best friend is the same. Okay, he is okay. so fun. Let's wrap up McKenna that Grace real awesome. quick. So <laughs> McKenna Grace, she's really, really good. No, she but is. She's really her great. best friend <laughs> podcast. I so I need awesome. more podcasts. The kid's great, especially whenever him and Paul Rudd get together and they start having their back and forth. Oh, They're man. great. Of course, we get Sexiest Man Alive, or should we say Sexiest Seismetologist Alive, oh, Paul Rudd with another Baskin Robbins product placement. Because Baskin He's Robbins so always annoying. finds out. He's wonderful. You know, he plays that like goofy, innocent, like, hey man, this is wonderful. He fanboys as hard as the audience does whenever the ghost trap gets presented. And then of course they unleash it because, you know, oh it's, ex God. it's exactly what a fanboy would do. Carrie Coon does a wonderful job as the mother who's just trying to figure out what the is the next step in life and what to do with her kids. Everybody does really great, though. If they do, it's a great yeah. cast. However, look, guys, this is Ghostbusters, okay? And we were promised 
that the OG guys would be back. So we have everybody back. And yes. I mean everybody all the way down to Annie Potts. Very small part for her at the beginning and then during a credit scene, but it's worth it. Is that the lady with the red lips? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But she sells those somber moments as she remembers Egon. And you have Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, Dan Aykroyd, and these guys are good. I mean, the first time we really officially get Dan Aykroyd is that part in the trailer where he picks up the phone and says we're closed. Not gonna lie, I could have swore that was gonna be uh, old Bill. No, I just assumed. No. That I scene though, where she's calling up because you know she they watched the commercial, you know, call the Ghostbusters and everything like that. So she calls up and Ray picks up the phone. And Mind you, while she's in jail. While she's in jail, <laughs> that's her one phone call. And you know, it, like first, almost first thing out of his mouth is you know Egon Spangler can rot in hell. And then she says, yeah, well, he's dead. And then you just see that guilt flush over his face. Is it's, he dead in real life? Yeah, Harold Ramis died. He's been dead. Wait, so the CGI? By the way, okay, so... What? End of the movie, right? Here we are at the farmhouse. Here we are. We're stopping That's Gozer, amazing. played by Olivia Wilde, in a cameo nobody saw coming. Are we sure it's her? I, I have like to say... I would it, probably put, like, $10 I'll on I'll give 100 sure bucks. A hundred bucks in the pot that that's her. By the way, she tears J.K. Simmons in half. <laughs> so fast. At, who plays Shandor, okay? He was in it for, like, Didn't a Didn't expect that cameo. Second. They literally called him up, I bet. No, like, we need you to be here for two minutes. Oh, my tops. God. They were like, roll out of whatever you're in from bed. And He's the king of Sony cameos at this point, <laughs> I guess. He's so great. But we got Gozer attacking, you know, we got the demon dogs, or the terror dogs, my apologies. And, you know, we got the whole new team of Ghostbusters, and, I mean, they're getting their ass kicked, you know, by, through the tornado, through the smoke and the haze, here come the OG Ghostbusters. And these guys haven't missed a beat, okay? Bill Murray's cracking wise. Ernie Hudson is still the straight-faced everyman. Dan Aykroyd is, is Dan he's, Aykroyd. he's Dan Aykroyd. He gets so technical and over the top with it. And it's great. You're like, oh man, I just, I kind of wish everybody was there, you know? I mean, there was four of them. It would have been so great to see them. And the brilliant people who have done the visual effects for oh, this yeah. movie somehow, so brilliant. they somehow wonderfully recreated Harold Ramis. In, oh, in his jumpsuit. And I mean, we've seen visual effects that have de-aged, like, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah. And Sam Jackson. The CGI here is unreal. I didn't even realize he was dead in real life. Yeah, it's like one or two moments where he moves a little too fast where you can tell it's CGI, but everything else, though, is like, it's it's pitch perfect. I, so my jaw sad. was on the floor. And, you know, they don't try anything disrespectful, like trying to reuse old, like, audio or, you know, unused audio or stuff like that. But, you know, there he is, and all four of them are there, and they're activating their, their guns, and they're taking out Gozer, and, like, you just, you want to stand up and clap. It's just, it's such a great image seeing everybody there, even Ghost Egon, just blasting away at Gozer. And then, you know, the end of the movie, it, and it, it ends beautifully, right? So, you know, the whole thing through the movie is that Carrie Coon was like, you know, my, my dad's a dickhead. You know, he's an he, he left his family, he didn't care about anybody. Once again, no audio or anything like that. He just walks up to her, hugs. Silence was golden. Evaporates, and I have not cried that hard since Endgame. And I mean, I, I had to cover my mouth with <laughs> with my mask on, guys. I was Stop. I was ugly oh sobbing. My God. That was the most heartfelt, so emotional annoying. moment that I've had Don't since Endgame. It. <laughs> it was beautiful. Of course, you get your you know prerequisite credit scenes. Of course. First credit scene includes Sigourney Weaver and Bill Murray, and they're recreating the whole test that Bill Murray did at the beginning of the first Ghostbusters with the cards, which is amazing. But then the second one kind of sets up a sequel. So it is Annie Potts, and it's Ernie Hudson. And Ernie Hudson, it, you know, Winston has set up this huge financial empire. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we find out that he's actually been paying the rent for Ray's shop to keep it alive. And he never gave up the firehouse. And so, they, you know, they pull in the Ecto-1, and then it camera goes down into the basement to the old containment center, and the light is flashing red. So... I don't know what it means. That's exciting stuff. I'm going to tell you right now. Five out of five. This is the most heartfelt, most exciting... You give away five out of five tacos. You're like, right. It's disrespectful. Underwear, this is a ten out of five. I would gladly oh see... Gosh. We saw this in IMAX. While there's no expanded IMAX ratio, the sound... The sound at the end showdown alone was worth that price of admission. I will say, it is vibrant, it is beautiful, the colors come across, oh, put it You said away. colors? 
put it She said away. colors? Oh, God. Only at AMC Theaters opening weekend. As soon as I saw it, I said I need it. And they gave me this really cool collector box. Oh my God. Uh, uh, and I face. love everything about Put that down. I'm going to smack it down. Look at it. Put it down. Look at it. Oh, oh my. my. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Put this is, this is going to find a place behind me. Anywho. Amazing. So I would say, personally, I mean, I don't really care about the movie. <laughs> I really don't. Um, but it was nice and it was it was visually stunning. Um, and her friend was great. So I'll give it a three out of five. I feel like that's not bad. Three out of five tacos. I mean, for you, that's, I've rated that's a, a gold worse. star for you. But there, I really could care less about this movie. I'm fine with never seeing I, it again. I don't, well, getting this thing on 4K. Good luck to you. I'm not so, but just go see the movie. It's yeah. the most wonderful, heartfelt, non-egregious sequel that I've ever seen. This movie, Ghostbusters Afterlife. This is the movie. Just go see it. Go see it. If you guys have seen it, let us know down in the comments yes. below. Let us know if you bought one of these $35... Oh, put it down. Let us know if you got this. And how do you open it to put the popcorn in? Yeah, I don't want to figure it out. I don't want to break the hinge. Put the instructions. Here's the here's the latch. I'm not about to attempt that. If I break this, okay, I'm gonna cry. Get, get it out of here. Let us know if you guys saw the movie. Let us know if you bought that popcorn bucket. Let me know if you somehow got your hands on one of the Ecto One coolers that High C has been giving out on social media. I have been trying so hard to get one, but they just are so reluctant. I just want one. That's it. Until next time, guys, this has been VHS Tacos signing off. And remember, if you hear something strange in the night, who are you going to call? My mom. No, please stop. Adios. <laughs> Woo. Bye.